as rare and as uncommon as this is, uh, you're not alone. I think we've come a long way in treating patients with chordomas. And uh, depending upon the, the individual circumstances, uh, we have a reasonable shot at curing the patients. There really are very good treatment options. Uh, there are well-defined treatment options at this point, and there really are experts who understand the disease and are looking to make treatment better every single day. I cannot overemphasize how important it is for patients to be seen by experts who are familiar with this disease. You need a very caring team. Uh, you need people really driven to the fact that they, they are passionate about treating this disease. Seek out a facility, a treatment facility, that is dedicated to chordoma patients. It's a very rare tumor. It requires expertise. And one of the things that can benefit patients most, I think, is doing things right the first time. The one most important thing you must do is have a first line of treatment that's the right one. You have to also be relentless in getting data and information. This is not a run-of-the-mill type of disease or even cancer where you can go to your local hospital and know that you're going to get the best treatment. You have, you have the time, in most cases, to do your homework. Even though you may be tired and even though you may be worn out and even though you may feel like you've got information overload, continue to reach out to folks who have experienced the disease, research it more, get more information, never stop asking tough questions, never get comfortable with the situation that you're in because there's, uh, it's very easy to go down the wrong path, it's very easy not to get the right treatment for this disease. You have to ask more questions and you cannot simply trust one doctor who has one opinion on how your path should go. The great thing about chordomas, as much as everything is bad, they do grow very slow. And unless they're resting on some real bad artery and you have no room for movement, you have time. You can give yourself 30 days to talk to people, get opinions, show them a binder of your history and let them tell you what they think you should do. This is a disease that one doesn't have to get it treated in the, in the next two weeks or three weeks. There are certain types of chordomas that can be very aggressive. So, I mean, that's a different pathway. But in general, I would, when a patient is seeking treatment, I think it is worthwhile to check out and feel comfortable with the team. Bring in a good friend or family member who's helpful, who could be a helpful ally to you. My wife has been a tremendous, uh, uh, a tremendous help and a tremendous a constant for me. And I, it's a very hard position and not one that, that patients always fully, you know, stop to appreciate. Give the patient your husband, your wife, your child, space to be afraid or, or to cry or to be mad or whatever is necessary. When he has to zone out in the doctor's appointments, that I need to be absorbing what these doctors are saying. I need to know, I need to be almost like a a speaker for him so that when we leave the doctor's office we can continue the conversation when he's ready to continue it. People that make well-informed choices about their treatment for chordoma do better. They live longer, they are healthier, and they have the greatest uh, chance of success over a very long period of time of being well. When a patient reaches out to the Chordoma Foundation, they have access to um, not only the website, but a patient navigator. Uh, who can help them work through whether a trial is right for them or not. Close to 100% of the patients I see have spoken with somebody at the Chordoma Foundation before I've seen them. Over the last 10 years, the field of Chordoma research has been completely transformed. We've gone from knowing virtually nothing about this disease and how to potentially treat it, to having an understanding of the molecular drivers and what makes this disease tick. We've identified key vulnerabilities and promising targets for treatment. And now I think we find ourselves at an inflection point where the next five years is really going to be about translating that knowledge about the disease 
into actual treatments for patients. The big challenges are solved um, when there's a lot of momentum and I think the thing that's so exciting right now is there's just an extraordinary amount of momentum in basically all of the areas that we work in. The growth in, in Chordoma understanding and therapy has been like nothing I've seen in, in my career or I've even heard about. What uh, keeps me excited and makes me most excited about uh, the field of Chordoma is the fact that I see a constant movement forward in the understanding, I see a growth in the people who have the same excitement I have about trying to treat uh, and understand and maybe even one day cure this tumor.